Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode I'm going to actually address a user question from my Facebook fan page. The question was, what do I do to every photo? Well, like, what are the five things I do to every photo? And that's of course a moving target because it's maybe five different things for a portrait versus a landscape image versus, you know, something else. So, um, I'll start with the first five things I do to um, any portrait image. I'll say, you know, five things I look for, five things I'll touch, most likely on every portrait I do. So, I'm starting in Lightroom. However, this would be the same exact thing if you didn't have Lightroom and you were just using Camera Raw because I, of course, shot this in Raw. So, I start off in Lightroom in the Develop module, which again is the exact same thing as Photoshop's Camera Raw. So the, you have the exact same sliders, the exact same techniques that I'm going to be doing. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and jump in. So I'm looking at a, a portrait here that I shot at, with some natural window light. And right off the bat, um, the first thing that would distract me from this photo is I'm not quite sure the white balance is right. Also, it's a little bit underexposed. So those would be two things I look for right off the bat. So let's see how I would adjust those. Uh, head over to the develop module and again if you were in camera raw you would just do the same thing in your camera raw controls and there is a white balance eyedropper and again there's a white balance eyedropper in camera raw so you'd have the same thing and I can also tell that I'm losing detail in the shadows here not as bad as I thought but certainly losing some detail and it's losing detail in the areas that I really wouldn't care about but first thing first the white balance is potentially driving me crazy now, there's a thing I say about white balance, is that mathematical white balance, in other words, perfect white balance, the person is holding a gray card, and you click right on it with the eyedropper, and you get mathematically perfect white balance, doesn't necessarily mean it's good white balance, meaning it could be correct, but you still don't like the way it looks. So even though I don't have this person holding a gray card, I don't really have 18% gray to click on, I'll use a look for something that should be white or should be black and start there. Now, just because I might, even if they're holding the gray card and I get perfect white balance, that doesn't mean I'm going to like it. So let's see what I get. Now, this is one of the reasons I prefer Lightroom over Camera Raw is that as I hover in the different areas of the photo, I'm getting a preview over here on the left-hand side that's showing me what I would get if I were to click. So if I were to click in that area, that's going to really throw the color off. Maybe it's a creative effect and I want that. Actually, that would look actually pretty cool on this photo, but maybe we'll do that with a virtual copy. And um, But in this case, I do want um, something that's going to be a little warmer on this photo. So let's say I click here and it adjusted it slightly, maybe barely, maybe I can't even tell. And we're maybe right there, and the white balance is, here we'll do a before and after, undo. Yeah, see, I almost liked it a little bit better the other way. So let's go back, develop module, and I'm going to say right about there. So it wasn't that far off. It wasn't as far off, off as I originally thought. But let's say you clicked on the perfect spot, and it's mathematically correct, and you don't like it. Well, I would still go over to the temperature to dial it in a little bit closer to what I want. So if I wanted it a little bit warmer, i make it a little, you know, I can make it a lot warmer, which that wouldn't be so bad either, or I can make it a lot colder. But I get to dial it in, even though it's not mathematically perfect anymore, it's more appealing to my eye, and that's what really matters. Okay, so first things first, I got the white balance where I want it, whether it's, again, 100% correct mathematically or not. The next thing I would adjust goes down into the tone controls. So I kind of group those all together as one thing. If it's underexposed, or I want to adjust the exposure, I would adjust the exposure up a little. That's a little bit more appealing for me, right about there. And if I were losing detail in the highlights, which I'm not, there's no warning there, I would adjust the recovery. If I was losing detail in the shadow areas that I care about, again, I don't care about the walls, then I would bring up a little fill light. Now, I might still bring up a little fill light because I did see a little bit loss in her eye, her iris, but that would be about as far as I would go. So, two things. White balance was number one. Tone controls, I would call group those together as number two. 
Number three, the third thing I do to every photo is I always, 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 this is one of the things I do no matter whether it's a landscape or a portrait. I always crank up the clarity a little and crank up the vibrance a little. Now a little, of course, is relative to your photo. So if that's too sharp or too much clarity. I can start to see it in the uh, bangs here where it's getting here. I'll zoom in on it so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, that's less. That's more. That's almost too much. So you do, even though it doesn't look like it's doing a lot, it really is doing a lot if you zoom in on it and take a look. So I would go right about there. And we zoom back out. The next thing I would do is, let's see if we can pump up the vibrance a little bit. And again, let's go all the way down. No vibrance. All the way up. Too much vibrance. So I just crank up the vibrance. This is where we start it. Just a little bit, just to make those colors pop just a little bit more. So, you got the idea. So those are three things I do before I even go to Photoshop. So whether I'm in Lightroom, which is where I usually am, I'll do those three things. Or whether I'm in Photoshop's Camera Raw, I'm going to do those three things before I even touch any other adjustments on the photo. Now, I've done three out of the five. What's next? Since I am bringing all my photos into Lightroom, the next thing I'm going to do is anything that I don't feel that Lightroom is going to do a good enough job at or it's going to require more work, then I will go to Photoshop. Now, for example, on a landscape, I tend to do most of the work inside Lightroom because there's not a whole lot that I can't do there. But on a portrait where I want more tools, more controls, content aware, all the things that Photoshop can give me, then I will go to Photoshop with this um, particular photo. So if we do a Command E on the Mac or Control E on Windows, that will do it. Also, if I go back to the library and here, let's go to the grid view. If I right click on this photo, we can say edit in Photoshop. I just wanted to show you the menu. I never do it this way. I always do the command E, but you know where it is. All right. So now what that will do is take a copy of the photo with my adjustments. So the three things I just did will now open up in Photoshop for me to continue working on it. All right. So what's next? And this is kind of one of those age old questions. Okay. You're in Photoshop. Where do you start? And I used to ask that question of all my friends and like, where do you guys start? Where do you do this? And the answer I got back, which made the most sense to me is start with what's bugging you the most. So I, I know that's kind of not like not a every single photo I do, but if I were to start on this photo, whatever was be, whatever was bugging me the most would be the next thing I would adjust. And the thing that kind of jumped out at me is this little hair, these little hairs right up here. So I might go ahead and adjust that. But again, that wouldn't be in every single photo. And the question was, what are the five things I do to every photo? But just letting you know my workflow would be, the minute I'm in Photoshop, I start with what's bugging me. But let's get back to the original question. So what are the other two things I always do to every portrait? So let's go ahead and zoom in. Eyes are very important to me for a portrait. And blemishes are also equally important to me on a on a portrait. So I'm going to grab my uh, Wacom pen here and we're going to, uh, again, it's whether, it doesn't matter which one you start with, whether it's the blemishes or the eyes, but I'm going to usually do both of those. So I see a blemish right here on the chin and you know there are all kinds of things that you might uh, consider to be a blemish or not a blemish or things you remove or not remove. I'll leave those rules up to you. But my rule is typically if the, th if the object or thing wouldn't be there in two weeks, meaning it's a temporary pimple or outbreak or whatever, then it gets removed. In other words, if, that's what, if that person doesn't naturally have that all the time, then I'm going to take it out. And I may take out some things that they do naturally have all the time, but again, it, that would be a person-by-person -person case. But in this case, I'm using the spot healing tool which also in CS5 is now content aware, so it even does a better job than before. And I would just start to go through the photo, taking out those little things that, again, you wouldn't notice on the person every time you see the person. So things that I would get rid of. And again, I would go through the entire photo, getting rid of, now again, of course, we're borderline here. Some of these may be freckles, but guess what? They're coming out. 
and I'll let you decide on your photos what you decide to take out or leave in. That is totally up to you. There is no law, there is no rule, there is no committee that says you have to leave or have to take out whatever. It is your photo, you do what you want to do, it's between you and your client. Okay, so now, I've, that would be number four, let's say the blemishes. Number five, I con I'll concentrate on this eye. Now, um, a couple of things with this, uh, this particular eye. One, there is a hair going through it, which I may or may not like. In this case, I'm not liking. So again, I would attempt a little spot healing to remove that hair. And the spot healing with Content Aware is a whole lot better for stuff like this now. So I would just take that hair right out of there. Okay, oh, a couple little bad spots there but easily enough fixed okay now all kinds of techniques for whitening the eye or removing the red and I haven't really found one that I'm in love with I mean as you can see I'm doing a little spot healing to kind of remove some of the most obvious spots um, but as far as lightening the eye I typically do the you know the screen effect which I'll show you in just a moment here now, what that means is I'm going to go to my Layers panel. I have the background layer. I'm just going to hit Command-J on Mac or Control-J on Windows to duplicate that layer. You can also do it from the Layer menu. Now that I've got an exact copy of that layer, I'm going to change the mode to Screen, which will make the layer twice as bright, and of course, including the eye, but it made everything twice as bright. And now I'm going to hide that layer with a mask. So I'm going to add a layer mask, but if I just click it, it's just going to add the layer mask and reveal everything. I want to hold down my Option or Alt key on Windows and click to hide, meaning it just basically filled in that layer mask with black. Now I'll use a paintbrush. I'll switch to letter B. And we'll make sure we're on white, which we are, which will unmask the areas that I paint. And I also just go ahead right off the bat and drop the opacity of that layer down to 50% just so I can have something to look at. And it's not going to stay at 50% because that's going to be too bright. So once again, we're just going to go in here. And of course, I'm using a Wacom pen, which makes life a whole lot easier for this kind of stuff as opposed to a mouse because it is pressure sensitive. And it allows you to get in a lot closer with a lot more detail than trying to do this with a mouse or, heaven forbid, a trackpad. Okay, so now I've whitened the eye, but it's too bright. I know that. 50% is always going to use, you know, I shouldn't say always, but most times it's going to be too bright. So let's go out to 100% view. Or well, not 100%, but I can, where I can see the whole photo. Because that's what people are going to look at. They're going to look at the whole photo. Most people are not going to be zooming in on a particular spot. And when you look at the whole photo, that's where you can really make your adjustment. So 50% is too bright. 100% <laughs> was way too bright. And I knew that. So, But that was just giving me a, uh, a way to paint and know what I missed or did not get. Uh, so I would drop the opacity down to whatever you're comfortable with. My target is usually around 35%. Some people need less. Some people need more. It depends on your photo. So right around 30, 35% is where I'm going to be. And again, that's not bright. That is bright. So just enough. That might even still be a little too bright. So I drop it down a little bit more for this person. There you go. So that's about where I would be. So now, next, let's zoom in. Now, whether you keep this layer or not is up to you. I'm of the belief that once I make an adjustment, I rarely ever, ever, ever go back and make that adjustment again or tweak it. You know, in other words, I make sure I'm satisfied with it first before I move on. So let's say I am satisfied with that. I'm going to hit Command-E to flatten it because I, that's what I do. If you want to keep all your layers, do not beat me up. You keep all your layers. This is what I do. This is You can do it your way. All right, so now the next thing is I want to add a levels adjustment. Not a levels adjustment, actually. Yeah, levels adjustment to kind of increase the contrast in the eye. So um, you can do this a couple of different ways. You can do it the way we did it uh, a minute ago where we masked after the fact. You can select the eye beforehand and do it. Either way is fine. We'll go to our adjustments. 
and we'll go to our levels adjustment. We'll add a levels adjustment there. And it will add the adjustment, and I can then go, and here we can do it one of two ways. We can, it's already got a mask on it, so we can fill that mask in with black. So if I do uh, option delete, or here we should, here, let's go switch the colors first. There we go. There we go. So I filled it in with black. All I did was fill in that entire level adjustment with black, just like we did before. Uh, with an option delete on the Mac or alt delete on PC with a black foreground color. Okay, so next. Um, now let's start to paint in or reveal that just that adjustment on the part of the eye. And it would help if we we're in the right color. So let's go back to white. There we go. So now we're just revealing a spot of that eye that we can make our levels adjustment. And we just want to make a little bit more contrast in the eye there. So now I can show you the exaggeration. That's what we did. So just so you know, you are painting. And now you can tweak it to an adjustment that looks right for you. And again, that's too much. Her eye looks almost like she's a demon. So we don't want that. But you get to control it with a slider, and that's why I zoomed out, because this is the way people will look at the photo. So just a slight bit of contrast in the eye. When you can see that color stand out like a light bulb, it's too much. So we just want a slight adjustment. And now you've seen the five things I do to every portrait. So three of them are in Camera Raw or Lightroom Develop Module. The other two are in Photoshop. Even though I can do some spot healing inside of Lightroom or in Camera Raw, it's just so much easier to do it in Photoshop. So I don't spend a lot of time retouching skin inside of Camera Raw or the Develop module. But in Photoshop, I absolutely do. Now, um, again, so at this point, I would go on doing the other things for that particular photo that I would want to do, like the hair I talked about earlier. But now you get the idea. Five things I do or look for in every portrait, and then after that, it's whatever that particular portrait needs. So that's it for this episode of the Adobe Creative Suite Podcast. My name is Terry White. Thanks for watching.